Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I have the 2020 release of the Springbank 21 year old. This was the top of my list of Scotch whiskeys I wanted to acquire last year. At only 3,300 bottles produced, it was a hard one to come by, but I'll let you know if it lives up to my hype when I nose it, taste it, and give it a mark. As you may or may not know, Springbank switches up their maturation types each year for their core range. For this expression, it's using 30% X bourbon casks, 30% rum casks, 25% sherry, and 15% port. This whiskey definitely needs time to open up. This glass has been sitting for an hour. 46% ABV. Let's see how it is on the nose. So much going on with this nose. Um, really nice, like rhubarb, raspberry, cherry pie filling combo. The fruit notes in here are amazing. Then you get that typical spring bank funkiness. It's like a little more rusty this time. Almost kind of like, you know, that like red rust kind of smell, um, that kind of like metallic-y note to it. Kind of goes along with the funkiness. Really interesting, really good. There's orange in here, like a blood orange kind of note. Um, very subtle, but like really enjoyable gasoline kind of vapor going on with it. Grilled lemon, definitely like grilled lemon, like um, like warm, uh, like right off the barbecue lemon juice. There's a lot to unravel in this whiskey, and it seems like every time I go to it, maybe there's something a little bit different. That's what I love about Springbank and I love about Scotch whiskey in general. This is definitely a whiskey that needs its time. You need to take time with it, but uh, rewarding when you do. Let's go palette. Crazy stuff going on with this. So I get like peach, grapefruit, kind of like tartiness, and then typical red fruits like you would expect with sherry cass, dates, raisins, that rhubarb, pie note comes back like rhubarb pie filling delicious stuff you get like tobacco on the finish kind of like cigar like cigar kind of tobacco it's definitely like some nuttiness in there and then the oak the oak in this is so nice it's like a smoked hickory kind of style oakiness just plays really well with the rest of the flavors in this whiskey like i said before this thing unravels it's like a tight onion that just keeps peeling back flavor um really enjoyable. This is definitely a challenging whiskey. And I'll mention last year's, because last year's 2019 release was a very drinkable whiskey. This one is much more of a challenging whiskey. Um, I love that about it. Lots of subtle complexity um, and delicious flavors for sure. If you're a fan of that Campbelltown style, uh, if you're into like more challenging kind of whiskeys where you have to kind of dig in there, spend some time with it, I mean, this thing ticks all the boxes. Phenomenal stuff. Score-wise for me on this one, I'm going 92 and a half out of 100. Now let's talk value. These are super limited prices and lots of markets went up this year. Um, I've heard people say in the US, this is a $500 bottle now, where it was, you know, uh, under 400 the previous year. Um, here in Ont uh, Ontario, we don't get it at all. Here in Canada, I've seen this retail anywhere between 430 to 500 Canadian dollars. I was not able to get a bottle at retail. Again, super limited. A lot of it was allocated in like lottery. Some of it was first come first serve. Um, there was a website that crashed <laughs> with so many people trying to get some spring bank stuff this year. So unfortunately I had to source this on the secondary market. I didn't get beat up too bad. I paid $530. So about $100 more than I saw this at the lowest retail. Um, I was okay with paying that because I really wanted this bottle. Um, but for value wise, again, just not quite worth the money that I paid in my opinion, but not that much. Like I am glad that I acquired this bottle and I do think that I'm getting lots of uh, rewards from it. I do like it quite a bit. Just $530 is crazy. Um, especially when you look at whiskeys, uh, this age range, this ABV in the market. I mean, I get it's only 330 
bottles. I get that the casts they use for this are probably very, very good. I mean, you can tell they're great. I'm going to take off one mark for value. Bring it down to 90.5, but still, what a phenomenal pour. And uh, let's see how this compares to last year's 2019 release. So the 2019 Spring Bay 21, 45% uh, port, 55% rum cast. You can tell the color um, on the newer 2020, way darker. I guess I could contribute that to the, uh, the addition of sherry cast. They must have used some first fill, if not all first fill sherry, for this to get that color so, so dark. So 2019, love this whiskey. Um, I think I said this was one of the most drinkable whiskeys I ever had. And what I mean by that is just like, you know, you just sip this thing down and it just goes down so, so easy. Um, very nice and sweet. I think that's kind of like the main difference is, is the drinkability of the 19 uh, versus the complexity and the challenge of the 2020. This one, again, sweeter, um, less complexity, um, but overall drinkability, a little bit nicer. Still got that kind of like rhubarb, kind of like a fruitiness to it, those like pie feeling notes. Um, I think the difference is that like that, the funkiness on this is different. The rusty uh, element that I got to the funk, uh, not present in the 19. You definitely get those like sweet raspberry, strawberry, um, pie filling notes that are just so, so gummy and, and so good. The viscosity on both of these is great through, through the roof. Even at 46%, I mean, you're getting all that on the palate. It's like strawberry candy. I mean, the candy element, the crystallized sugars are definitely more sweet um, and just delicious. I mean, this one is just pure delicious. This one is also pure delicious, but more of a challenging dram. The 19 you could give to, you know, a beginner and they would just drink it down. This one uh, requires a little more patience and time. Um, that's what I like about it. But yeah, both phenomenal pours, and uh, I guess I will be spending my hard-earned money on a 2021 spring bank at any cost, because that's what I do. <laughs> I'm a tater for that um, overpay, but I mean, I can't complain. It's great whiskey, so not disappointed at all. There you have it. Let me know what you think. Spring bank prices are going up so, so heavily. Popularity is growing. Shop owners are charging more because people will pay it. Um, the way it goes, I guess. I still think the 10 year old is a great pour. Spring bank 10, you can still find it for pretty decent value out there. And I think it's, it's a phenomenal whiskey. Um, everything else seems like it's, it's way up there in price. So yeah, let me know what you think. Spring bank, is it priced? out of uh, what you would consider something that would be viable for a purchase or are you like me and just love it enough that you're willing to overpay just to experience it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, really much appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Come check me out on Patreon if you want to um, get involved, maybe win um, some delicious samples. Check me out over there. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers guys.